Hello and welcome to another episode of Script to Screen. I'm your host, Mark Bauer. This is a talk show devoted to local filmmakers and writers of the Iowa City area. Today my guest is Wyatt Billingsley. Welcome, Wyatt. Uh, so you're a student at the University of Iowa? Yep, yeah. Okay, and um, what are you majoring in? Uh, I'm an English major. Uh, right now I'm a junior, and uh, but it, like my that's kind of a poor representation of me because I was a transfer student, so I'm like I'm a little bit older than other juniors, and 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 yeah, so a lot of stuff. So where were you from originally? Uh, I'm originally from San Diego, California. Um, I went to a community college out there, and then I transferred out here. So yeah. how do you like it comparatively? Um, it's it's. It's like subtly different, you know. Um, like the people here are a lot, a lot, like friendlier, you know, kind of just in passing. Um, but uh, but at the same time, like you know, it's it's like cold and yeah. and that, that's it's, it comes with its own problems. So yeah, so yeah. But it's, it's good. You know. Not too many beaches around here. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate, but yeah, true. Yeah. But you're liking it all right. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Um, it's it's interesting. Um, I think it's great to just like like see other parts of the country and just know how people live and and that's what I really wanted to do. Like get out of San Diego and go somewhere else. And so I'm here. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're an English major. Uh, what's your concentration specifically? Um, I uh, I focus on creative writing um, as much as I can. Outside of that, I. Uh, I'm kind of like, I have a growing specialty in um, gothic literature, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, and, and also I take some classes in like medieval literature too, but, uh, but like only just a little bit, yeah. So what's some of your favorite uh, gothic novels or literature then? Um, I really, uh, um, let's see, like, one of my favorite books is like this one called The Monk, which is uh, kind of like the original um, uh, priest as like pervert kind of like pieces of fiction. You know, it started that whole trope. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's like there's a lot of kind of stuff like that in the gothic uh, genre. It's kind of like the or origin of like smut and like pulp <laughs> fiction and stuff. Yeah. And so. Um, so just like reading that is always fun, and like whenever somebody gets it gets it really well, uh, it comes across as really good. Like um, like obviously like I love uh, H.P. Lovecraft, mm. but um, most people will like love him for like his aesthetic qualities. But like um, my, one of my favorite my favorite uh, stories of his is like The Shadow Over Inns, Innsmouth, which is about um, kind of like going to a new place that. That, and the place itself has kind of this sketchy um, history. And uh, I was reading it while on a bus, and it opens with like a bus scene. And definitely, like, the kind of connection there gave me, like, you know, gave me goosebumps. And, like, that's the kind of stuff I look for in, in the books I read. And because it's really hard to make pe people feel uncomfortable by, like, reading things. So I think when it's done really well, it's, it's awesome. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, when did you first become interested in writing? Um, I first became, uh, well, I've always been really interested in telling stories, um, but when I was a, but, but I've, I'm dyslexic. And so when I was a kid, um, it was really hard to, I was really not motivated to write because uh, all my writing was just kind of terrible, it was really messy, <laughs> um, just I couldn't spell, I still can't really spell <laughs> all that well. But uh, but yeah, it was just it was really poor. And then in my senior year of high school, I took a uh, my 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 teacher kind of split this year in half, and half of it was just like normal English, and the other half was uh, creative writing. And uh, and like during that time, I wrote like a really short piece for him, and he said it was really good, and the other people in the class said it was really good, and so I kind of like it reinvigorated the desire to write in me. So so yeah, that's where I got my start. Um, so I do a little bit of writing myself, mm -hmm. and I remember when I was a kid, I read books. And I didn't realize, you know, okay, authors exist, mm -hmm. but it never clicked with me that I could be an author. Mm -hmm. I could do this. Did you ever have a moment where it kind of clicked, like, oh, this is something I could actually pursue, even though it might not be a book, 
it's okay for me to write, it's okay for me to explore this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mine definitely comes from reading some, like, some, like, it's when I, whenever I read, like, a bad book, like, it gives me a lot of hope, you know, because it's, like, I know, like, not only is this book bad, but it was bad, and, uh, like, the author thought it was good, all of his friends thought it was good, a publisher thought it was good, an editor thought it was good, they put it in, like, print, and then a bookstore thought it was good, and they put it on their shelves. <laughs> and so I figure if somebody who writes something that, like, isn't that great, like, I wish I, like, I had a good example, but I don't want to say anything bad, I, but... But, like, yeah, like, if they thought it was good and they, they can do Stephanie it, Stephanie Meyer. Can, yeah, like, like, but I, I'm thinking even, like, worse. Like, not, like, outright bad, but just kind of, like, Like, somebody that generally has some good words about them. Like, people respect them, but then they just turn yeah, out this, Yeah, and you're like, just kind of, like, it's just, like, the book is boring. And if, yeah. like, if, if, like, they can do that, then I can do that, you know? Yeah. Like, I can produce boring stuff all day, you know? So I should be able to get published and... and do whatever they can do so yeah so going back to the hp lovecraft uh, story you were reading about uh listening a response from you something you responded to in mm -hmm. writing is that something that you're really striving for and something you keep in mind while you're writing is i'm not just telling this story i want whoever's reading it to feel a certain way while they're reading it absolutely uh it's it's actually kind of a rule of mine um like I say that with, uh, while I'm writing it, if I can't feel what I'm trying to produce, then I know the reader is not going to feel anything when they're reading it. Mm -hmm. And so um, sometimes I'll just be writing, and I'll real like I'll be in a scene that I know is supposed to be really important, and I'll have gotten through it. And if I realize that I just did not care for that at all, then I have to restart it and fi figure out a different way to to tell that story. And it's just kind of like a, a, a personal standard for me. So yeah, yeah. There's a there's a big rule that you know if you don't care, how can you expect the mm -hmm. audience exactly, to care? Exactly, exactly. Because you're also you have to make them care about these characters, and you want to talk maybe a little bit a little bit about building character. Uh, is that where you start? Do you start with the plot or idea, or is it a setting? Typically, where do you find your story beginning? Um, for me. Uh, Normally what happens for me is, is like I have, you know, I have a kind of a collection of ideas like people do, but, um, but for me the story really starts at the conflict. Because um, I don't, because there's, to me there's no story without conflict. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I could think of like a cool character or a cool world or something, and, but, but in my head it just doesn't register until there's, somebody has like a problem. And, um, and it's, and like that problem to me then is like is like the cornerstone for the rest of the story. Like if if I don't have uh, a problem, then I also don't have like a potential solution, and so there is no A or B in the story. You know, I've got nowhere to go. It would just ramble. It's really hard to write. But as soon as you have like a conflict, it's just like everything makes sense. You know, you can like you can start to kind of understand why the, this character would have this problem. You know, mm -hmm. what kind of person would deal with this problem and like. Like, how would that person deal with it? And uh, so, yeah, so it's, just, it's all about the issues. Do you have an example you'd be willing to share or, like, a concrete example of just maybe something small but, like... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, so, hmm. Okay, so, like, here's... This is, like, a... Like, I had this... I, like a lot of writers, would love to create kind of a story with, like, this big fictional world, right? And, uh, you know, I spend a lot of the time daydreaming about how that would look, how I would mm -hmm. want that to look. Um, but uh, one of the problems with I would, was is that I have like no large issues to kind of put in that world. So it's really hard to form a story around, uh, around that. But then, for, but then like on a different time, uh, I, kind of, I got it a lot smaller. And I, I thought of like an individual problem for two characters, and this was like um, instead of thinking about like the world ending or whatever, I thought about uh, uh, what if you had like um, like a legal battle in a fantasy world? What would that look like? Mm -hmm. And because then you suddenly have uh, like somebody uh, has stakes, you know, like like I was I was imagining like um, you had you had like. Uh, 
an elf murderer and another elf has mm -hmm. to represent him. And and like just like the complicated implications of like homicide in elf culture <laughs> yeah. because because they live forever, so arguably it would be like more of a problem. Like yeah. and like then if you were the lawyer defending this other elf, like you would have a much bigger problem because the problem would be so much more taboo, you know? And uh, and then suddenly you have to like kind of figure out what kind of person would be um, like would be willing to put up with that kind of issue, you know, and and like but like again like like then kind of the, you can build the world off of that, you mm -hmm. know, and but if you if I had just started with oh I want like uh, a slightly modernized uh, like version of a, like a fictional world, like that's great, but it doesn't really go anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. like people would love to see that, but they don't. Like, 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 it would be just be like a picture, you know. That's just a picture. It's not like a story. Yeah. So, yeah. I gotta tell you, I've just heard like a few minutes of this idea, and I want to read that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It, 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 it sounds pretty good. So, you see, like, that's that's all it is. It's just the conflict that makes yeah. it like interesting, like that. You like, you want to know how it ends. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so uh, a little bit about your process. Uh, do you typically? listen to music while you're writing? Does there have to be complete silence? Um, how do you pr approach it in that way? Um, I, I need to like minimize distractions, um, but it's, it's not like, I don't need like complete silence. I just need to be away from things that are like fun. So mm -hmm. what I do is, um, is kind of like the best time in my life for writing was back in San Diego because I, I did all my writing in the library um, just because like I needed to get away from like my house and like you know video games and mm -hmm. the computer and stuff and uh, so I'd go there and I would I would work on their computers and they had a time limit for how long you could use it and uh, and kind of like the combination of like being in like an environment surrounded by other people and also this kind of like pressure of like a deadline yeah. you know made it really um, r that made it work really well. Uh, and in addition, I gave myself like um, like kind of like a minimum number of words that I needed to produce. Uh, uh, like if you uh, in his book um, on writing by like Stephen King, uh, he says yeah. yeah he says he writes two thousand words a day. I was able to get one thousand words a day, and uh, and like kind of just like the combination of that was really really productive. Um, but uh, but like. But like you know, by that's by like no means like essential. I think just like what's really really important is is that you have like a workspace and not just kind of um, you know quiet. You know, yeah. So um, when I was in the Irish writing program, and we'll get to that in a mm -hmm. little bit for you. Right. But uh, when I was over there, uh, one of the lessons we learned was presence, mm -hmm. and you want to allow yourself to be as present as you can when you're writing, so that you can immerse yourself in the story and basically see it and feel it happening while you're writing it. Is that an approach that you take? Do you kind of immerse yourself or do you take more of an objective space where you're watching the story happening? Or mm, I think when you really get into it, kind of immersion is not like, for, or at least for me, it's not too much of an issue. Um, my problem is, is uh, is like sometimes I'll get like too immersed. Like I'll, I'll get like uh, it's it doesn't sound right, but it, it's it's sometimes you run into like uh, like writer's block for like mm -hmm. a situation and something. I'll get to one of those points where I'm writing a section of the story and I just don't feel it and I know something needs to change, but I'm already set plot wise that this needs to happen, mm -hmm. and that normally happens I think because I'm too immersed like I'm like this needs to happen like this this and this and I don't you don't take a second to realize that you're actually you could do whatever you want you know and like that's kind of like the ultimate beauty of writing like I can always just like crank it back and just have something entirely different happen and like that's that's a little bit harder to do but um, uh, I think immersion is important if you're like kind of you're in a good stream of things like you know how things are gonna mm -hmm. go and they're like they're working but uh, but it's just as important to be able to like take yourself out of it and look at it from like a very kind of mechanical perspective to like to fix things you know so, so yeah. when it comes to revision that's something that 
I had trouble with, especially in classes with, um, I had a teacher who said, okay, I want you to take the story and start from nothing. Mm -hmm. He's, and he said, I know that you, you're kind of married to it, but I just want, just for your purpose, see what you come up with next if you just bomb it. Have you ever done that to a story? Is that maybe something hard for you to do that, you know, you've um, worked so hard on this, but to change it now it seems so bad, but maybe has it turned out well for you? Yeah, uh, I think that's actually like absolutely essential if you want to be a good writer is like the willingness to just totally abandon a, a piece of work. Um, and like it kind of comes from like being able to take criticism for your work and like uh, reapply it to that. Um, it also kind of, in, it like, it just like if you don't, if you're not willing to throw it all away, then um, it's just really hard to kind of, kind of come at it from that like, very practical, like what am I trying to do? How, what, what do I want the audience to feel kind of situation? Um, uh, like for example, um, I, wrote this, uh, I wrote this story about space pirates, right? And so like in my head, I was just like, I want it to be about <laughs> space pirates. So I was like, space pirates, space pirates, space pirates. But then I was like, oh, but how, did, how would they be able to do this thing with this spaceship? You know, like, how would that work? Mm -hmm. And then I was creating all this cool stuff that, to like, allow them to fly this spaceship without like, having to explain a whole lot. And then it was all space and no pirates. And I, like, I had dedicated like, three or four chapters to like, fixing these problems. And I, was, like, I realized like, I just got to get rid of all of this because like I got rid of like I, like I can either have this or I can have space pirates, and so I had to you know choose like the ends instead of the means. So um, yeah, so that's just an example. Like sometimes it's necessary. And, yeah. So which medium do you particularly write? Is it short stories, uh, novels? Um, I uh, I want to say I I've dedicated more time to writing novels. Um, but I've been more successful with short stories. Uh, there's just more of a kind of market for that. I'm like, especially online. Mm -hmm. um, like you can, you, if you have a short story, it's really easy to get it out there. Uh, uh, maybe not necessarily like through a magazine, but like, like if you, uh, the, there's a lot of places to just post things and get views and uh, and like get like just like build a readership and that's that's like I think super essential to um, to just like your identity as a as a writer uh, but but definitely like I prefer I prefer kind of like the novel format and uh, and uh, I, I, I like I spend more time on that and focusing on le and learning how to work that. So yeah, spending more time with the characters, spending more time with the story. Maybe that's a little more enticing to you. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's more. Um, it's like if like writing a short story is great, but it's it's very much um, uh, kind of like like you don't you don't get to expand at all. Like um, like you don't get to like create a whole lot, and instead you just have to kind of like work with. Um, like as I was saying, like the the conflict is like everything there, and so everything else has to be kind of like boiled down to its like raw elements. It's like you're working with like um, cliches and then one thing that's yours, and that's kind of like how I think mo a lot of short stories come out. Because um, if you like, if you try to explain too much, it's no longer a short story. You have a novel, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so, so, and and that's kind of fun. Like sometimes when that works, you're just like you're like you'll be you'll be like yeah, I just made you know, um, magical cowboy short story. <laughs> and like, and it comes across perfectly. It's like nice, it's sweet, it's fun to write and fun to read. Uh, but it's not, it's not like all new, all yours kind of thing. So yeah. Have you experimented with uh, forms of writing? Maybe in, have you seen like an oral history written out, uh, a novel written out in that format? Have you? Um, I know there's like, uh, a lot of kind of like other ways to, to do it, like a lot of more experimental kind of stuff. But um, I guess like, I don't know, I haven't experimented a whole lot just because to me it's still about those, like the kind of mechanical fundamentals that I like to focus on. And that's what makes something good. You know, it's not mm -hmm. so much the form. Like if you take like a novel, 
Um, and if you kept like the things that were making it like work, like you could put it somewhere else. Like, like for example, like Game of Thrones does that very well. It's just like they kept all the things that they that made that book good, and then they kind of put it on the screen. And like that's why it's so popular. But like if um, if like you could also like if you did that and then like told it or orally, it would still be good. And so I I don't. Like I, I don't know, I, I think it'd be fun to like do do something like that and experiment with those kind of things, but it just it doesn't help you grow as much as just focusing on those fundamentals. So yeah. Okay. Uh, have you delved into any nonfiction? Yeah. Um, I uh, I worked at I, or I work at a bar, so uh, I tried for a class doing um, kind of some nonfiction pieces on. Uh, bar culture and like what it's like to work at a bar and uh, but it's it's not like my thing mostly because you can't uh, like your creative potential is like really limited like you can, there's certain things you can't do and that's just because like you don't have factual information to back it up or or to like represent it you know um, like you'll like you'll want to say something but you'll be like I, I need somebody to say this to me before I can do it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's very, very irritating, you know, like, like you can't just like, like do whatever you want. And it's, I don't know, and it's not for me, but yeah. Uh -huh. I remember when I first took a nonfiction class, I was terrified because the first day our instructor said, if you are uncomfortable, you're doing it right. And, <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to feel uncomfortable in this class for a whole semester, but it actually ended up being pretty, you know, opening, you know, mm -hmm. you, you write honestly about yourself. People are like, I've been there, and it's mm -hmm. kind of, it ended up being pretty therapeutic. Have you had an experience like that? Um, yeah, like, I, like, it was definitely interesting and very kind of um, eye-opening. Like, I, like, after having done that, I really understand why so many um, reporters uh, care so much about like the truth, you know, mm. because it's this you get very in touch with how things like actually are, you know, through a particular perspective. Um, but uh, uh, like like for example, I I my kind of like investigations of like bar culture led to um, led to me doing this piece on like sexual assault because just that was happening to so many other waitresses <laughs> at my bar. And um, and so you know you just get talking to them and you hear a lot and and it's kind of it's very like eye like eye opening and it kind of just like changed my perspective on different issues and whatnot uh, and like it was super uncomfortable but like like a good kind of like self growth uncomfortable you know uh, but it's still like from a creative perspective it's very kind of like very kind of irritating because there's only like so much you can do with even like the best information, like you like you can't take it to certain levels that you can if it was fiction. So, so like it's neat, but I don't know if it's for me. So yeah. Okay. So earlier you mentioned uh, a little bit about writer's block, and before the show we were, you, we were talking about how you have been taking a break from writing, but mm -hmm. have now gotten back into it. What would you say has is usually the thing that brings you back to writing? What's kind of the nagging? Oh, I. Is there ever I gotta get this idea down? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, I I guess I constantly have the craving to to kind of sit down and write. I just really love telling stories. I think that's kind of that love is essential to being a writer, and uh, and uh, like and so so I it's always kind of there. Definitely, if you write for a really long time, kind of that craving can be satisfied. So there's not so much of like the intense, just natural drive, uh, and and so I don't know. So like, kind of like getting back into it is just like having like the opportunity to do it. Like it'll just kind of be like, oh, okay, I can do it now, and so you just it happens. Um, but uh, I don't like saying that because it's kind of like the like. I think a lot of people go through that, and and then like they'll like they'll sit down, they'll write something really quick, they'll like start like something, and be like, this is like my novel, mm -hmm. you know, like this will be excellent, and they'll do like half a chapter, and then stop, and then go back to whatever else they were doing, and um, and I would be lying if I wasn't somebody who did that, 
but uh, or if I said I wasn't somebody who was who did that, but uh, but uh, definitely like getting back into it isn't the hard part. It's like it's like then staying into it, which like you have to kind of like just you just have to like sit down and do it because it's like one of those things where the barrier for entry is not it's almost non-existent. So you just have to kind of like it's all willpower and like willingness to get it done and and that kind of thing. So. Is there a particular genre that you write? Uh, you mentioned that you're really into gothic literature. Have you written one of those, or you know, is there anything that you tend to lean more towards? Um, I uh, strongly prefer. Or I guess like I I produce science fiction really fair, with fair ease. You know, <laughs> um, it's it's not very hard for me. Um, uh, I think that's just because of like that was what I was reading when I was growing up, and so it's like those kind of ideas are already there. Um, but also, I kind of this I guess just comes from like my love of like conflict. Is, is I really like kind of like sad, heavy stories. You know, um, the way like my brother put it, uh, like I showed him one of my earlier works, and um, and he says this is like why you write some really excellent train wrecks. <laughs> like, like this was just like a total catastrophe. It was pretty good, you know. Like, like, like these are some of the best tragedies I've ever seen, you know, and uh, and so that was encouraging. And I, I like doing that too because it's it's not something like everybody gets to experience every day, you know. And so it can like, touch it, like it touches on those emotions that that you don't get to access all the time, which is nice. Is there a genre that you haven't written but you would like to someday? Um, uh, this is gonna sound cheesy. I I kind of want to write, like, a romance, like a rom com kind of thing. I think those. I think a really good romance is like, is, is like, it's perfect. You know, because it's it's. I think it's really hard to do. You know, yeah. to have something that like kind of everyone can relate to on that level because, because like everyone like comes into those kind of situations like with their own, like history and stuff. And they'll be like, if something's wrong, like they'll call it out immediately, you know. And they'll bring all of their angst and prejudices to it, and like it'll just destroy everything mm -hmm. for them. But if it's like, if it's right, they'll get through it, and they'll be like, I just experienced like the birth of a relationship. <laughs> like this was this was beautiful, you know. Like, and they'll be like a little bit in love, and and uh, and so I, I think it'd be cool to do that, but like obviously like. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have more skill creating like destruction and yeah. like sadness, <laughs> so they don't quite mix. But uh, but still, that would be fun. You know? Is there a romance that you read that you're like, okay, I get it now? Like, mm, I don't know what's a what's a good romance that I read. Uh, well, there was, mm, I don't know. Oh, okay. So there was there was this one book. This is not really a romance. It was called um, it was called the Poisonwood Bible, and it was about these like these these four girls and their mom, and their dad who go on like this missionary trip to the Congo, and it just then like follows their life from that like just forward, and uh, and at one point like they have like they have ro like of course they go from like you know girls to women and they have romances like that. And like each one of them, each one of them had like a different kind of relationship with a different kind of guy, and uh, it was all very, I don't know, it was like it was really interesting and very kind of introspective and stuff, and um, and I don't know, I, I appreciated it just because it, it felt like real, you know, like I there was never a point where I was reading and I was just like like that would never happen, you know, <laughs> that's that's impossible. I was just like I was like yeah, like that's a thing, and so is that, and so is that, and that's interesting, you know, and so it was it was it was cool. I would kind of argue that Nick Hornby novels are romance novels a bit. Have you read High Fidelity or About a Boy? I've heard of them at all. Mm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's about as romantic as I get. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely not like somebody who like curls up with like a romance yeah. novel, but like I definitely like the idea. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's next for you? Uh, you're going on the Irish writing program, you told me. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I'm doing that. Uh, that comes up in the summer, and uh, I'm, you know, just planning on uh, using that as much as physically possible. Uh, also, um, I've got my 
creative writing final project for uh, the creative writing track coming up next year. And, um, and just like my honor thesis and such. And right now, what I'm working on is, um, is a, like a serialized set of short stories. Um, so it would look kind of like a novel, but instead of like publishing it in like, in like, instead of making it as a novel, what I intend to do is just kind of make it as like one long continuous story. And then um, I want to post it on Wattpad, which is like kind of like a YouTube for uh, writing. And, um, and fiction and such. And like the idea is uh, um, just kind of like seeing, like experimenting kind of with that, that new form and those new technologies and, uh, and just kind of like seeing what, what works and what doesn't along with just making this, this new, uh, new work that I've been kind of hoping to, hoping to produce for a while, so yeah. So it, you said that's for your senior project then? Yeah, that's my okay. senior project. And, uh, can you tell us just a little bit about that? Like, do you know what the idea is? Yeah, yeah. So um, the idea is uh, I want to make, I want to make basically like, um, I want to do uh, what steampunk did to like London, but for Rome. Oh. And uh, the idea is, is like you have this world full of, um, not magic, but like, I call it like, agriculture punk you know <laughs> where like where uh, there's all this there's all these like plants and uh things and like not magic but like they like they're kind of like kind of kind of like in the same way that steampunk isn't magic you know like mm -hmm. they're not real by any sense you know like like but they're definitely they're definitely kind of like uh like grounded in in things that they could have been doing you know uh and and I want to do that to I want to do that to Rome, and then have that just be this kind of like and that, because that's like a world, it lends itself well to that kind of serialization of a novel, and it also helps that like a lot of it's like already written for me, <laughs> so so I can I can work with that, and uh, and but again like my problem kind of like how we begin this is like I'm trying to figure out like small conflicts at each at each point in this uh, you know history. That I can work with, and uh, and so that that's kind of like the project right now. So. Sounds like you got a lot to work with. I do. I do. I'm, I'm sure, you're looking forward to getting into that. Yeah. 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 Thanks. All right. Uh, so one last thing I like to close up with is: Do you have any advice for uh, aspiring writers out there? Yeah. Um, well, first off, there's a whole bunch of advice out there to like find. Um, I and I'm a big advocate for finding that other advice, mm -hmm. like read books on writing by people you respect. Um, uh, like, like we said, like Stephen King's on writing is a really good one. Um, but for me, like my kind of piece of advice that I don't think other people will say is, is uh, kind of don't, like writing like is a discipline and I think people don't remember that. Like there are things, like, like although it is subjective because it's an art and stuff, mm. there are things that make certain parts of writing good and like the things that would make it bad. And I think it's very important to identify what those things are, those like building blocks. And because uh, it's only after you really understand why things are, things are the way they are that you can start kind of like breaking the rules. You know, like you need to know what rules you're breaking and why and how they affect the story, um, and and I think that will help you grow as a writer the fastest. Just like understanding like what makes a character a good character, you know, and and what makes a plot a good plot, and why does this setting work and this setting doesn't, you know, and uh, or else you'll end up like doing things like like oh I'll just remove you know quotation marks from this book <laughs> for no apparent reason, you know? And, and you'd be like, oh, it's, it's experimental, you know? And, and just people read it and be like, I don't get it, and they'll put it down, you know? But, uh, but and then that'll be a situation where you not understanding, like you not knowing why you care about something and the audience not knowing why you care. And so, yeah, so yeah. That's some pretty sound advice. Thanks. Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show, Wyatt. It's been uh, a pleasure, yeah. All right, awesome. I'm batting a 1,000 there. <laughs> okay. I wish you the best in Ireland. I hope that's a great time for you and that your senior year is full of writing and good times. Yeah, that would right. be nice. All right, uh, thank you for watching this episode of Script to Screen, and I'll see you next time.